from the moment that I find myself alive in the morning, I begin to praise God and to give Him thanks. For indeed, God has been good to us. And you know, that old hymn, Oh Jesus, I have promised. I can listen to our parents and our grandparents singing that in church and blessing our hearts. The second stanza says, Oh, let me feel thee near me. The wall is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle, the tempting songs I hear. My four are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus, draw down near and shield my soul from sin. Wow, what a message. What a powerful word. Oh, Jesus, I have promised. Have you made a promise to Jesus lately? And if you have, have you been living to that promise? Have you been true to that promise? We all fail at times when we make promises. This will be a good time for us to stop and listen to these devotions morning by morning. And as we share with you words from the Word, that they would encourage your heart and like you've been doing, sharing with your friends and your loved ones who are sharing with others, please don't get discouraged. I know sometimes you may have forgotten to share. And when you forget to share, remember, who you share with, they cannot share with someone else. So please share. You may not even agree with everything that is said. But you know what? If it's from the Word, just share it. God will use that which he chooses to use for him to get honor and glory, to draw believers closer unto him, and to draw the loss to him. So we continue this morning with Jephthah's vow was a commitment of faith. What was Jephthah's vow? His vow was a commitment of faith. Let me read for you Judges 11, verse 30 and 31. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hand, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a bond offering. You notice, he did not say whosoever. He said whatsoever. Jephthah, no doubt, may have been thinking of something. He may have been thinking of an animal. Who knows? I doubt that Jephthah was thinking of his daughter. But the vow was, he said, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a bond offering. If you give me this victory, I will give you, or I will sacrifice. One may wonder why Jephthah had to vow. Why he couldn't just keep quiet and say nothing? Had he thought that his daughter could come to the door? Did he leave servants, slaves, or others at home? Be advised. He could only give to the Lord what he had. This was a custom among generals to promise the God of their worship something of great value as a reward for God giving them victory. Jephthah believed God would give him the victory. And because of his faith, he made the commitment. Now, this was a strong vow for him to make. But as we look at it, we can see Jephthah's faith in God. It is as if he said, God, I must have your help. And if you help me and give victory, then I promise, or I am making a commitment to you, Lord. It is to you, God, a commitment I will keep. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, if thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hand, 
And it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my host to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a point offering. He said, Lord, I'll be the one to offer it up to you. Lord, I promise it shall surely be done. Jephthah cast himself upon the providence of God. That's the first thing he did. He cast himself upon the providence of God. He needed God to help him to win this battle. He knew that he could not win this on his own, in his own strength. He needed God to help him. I love what the Bible says. He says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy breath. He was willing to trust God. He knew he needed God to bring him back home. The Ammonites would have killed him, but God was able to give him victory. Many of us could be honest and say, I found myself in such situations where we made commitments to God. I could remember way back in my own life, when I needed God to help me, he was the only one to help. And I promised I would serve him. Maybe sometimes we make these promises when our backs are against the wall. We cry out for God's help. Maybe it was just a promise of commitment. When you find yourself in trouble or facing difficulties, where only God can help you, where only God can do for you what you would have done. Do you cry out to God saying, help me? Help me, Lord. If you would help me, I would serve you. If you give me a job, I will give to you. I will surrender to you. Have you ever done any of that? Asking God for help and making him a promise? Look back and see if you have fulfilled your commitment. God expects his children to live by faith and to learn to trust Him. What was that commitment that you made when you were facing difficulty? What is He now reminding you of? What will be your response? In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 7, He said, For we walk by faith and not by sight. The Christian life is a life of faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and verse 6, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Jephthah's vow was a commitment of faith. You may be saying, I don't understand what's happening to me. Nothing seems to be going right. I want you to stop for a moment. Had that ever happened to you in the past and you cry out to God and you ask him to help you? What was the commitment you made to God? What were the words that you said? For many Christians who are backslidden, we find ourselves in trouble and when we find ourselves in trouble, we cry out to God. God helps us. We promise, God, if you help me out of this, I'll make things right with you. But you know what? After we get God's help, we forget about the commitment that we made to God. But God hasn't forgotten. And sometimes we find ourselves back in trouble again. And we are crying out to God and want to make a similar commitment. The truth of the matter is, we may be able to fool our friends, but we cannot fool God. We cannot even fool ourselves. We need to stop and pay attention to what we promise that we will do and do it for the glory of God. Hey, there's no one greater for you to commit yourself to than to commit yourself to God. My time is up. Lord, as your people think of the commitments that they have made and commitments that need to be made, God, I pray you'll guide us. I pray you'll guide us in such a way that you'll be honored, that you'll be glorified. 
Help us, dear God, as we commit ourselves to you, Lord, that we'll be used of you. But help us to be able to lift these commitments. Let Jephthah be an example. We love you. Jesus, we want to be like you. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse our hearts, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have your way with us throughout this day. Lead us in paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you. Do have a great day as you see this devotion with your friends.